Section 6.4, the wave behavior of matter. So, knowing that light has a particle nature, not just a wave nature, the next obvious question was to ask whether matter had a wave nature. So if, if light, which is a wave, can behave like a particle, what about stuff that we see? Can it behave like a wave? That was the question. So this was, this was asked in the early 20s. And a grad student named Louis de Broglie from France um, figured it out. And he actually de determined that, yes, if you throw a ball, it doesn't just have a, uh, an, any mass. It doesn't just have a property like a ball, but also has a little bit of a wave to it. And the faster you throw it, the more like a wave it's going to behave. And also, the smaller that the mass is, the more obvious that this will happen. So if you get something as small as an electron, you have a really um, definitive, definite uh, movement like a wave that it would happen. So an electron's swirling around the nucleus, it's swirling around just like a wave would swirl around, back and forth in oscillation. So his formula is lambda, and lambda is a wavelength, so that's a wave property. And then he's got Planck's constant over mv, and mv is, is momentum. And momentum is a particle property, because you can talk about momentum of trucks and bullets. So you figure out that if you do throw a, a baseball, it does have a wave property in a very, very small way, but it's compared to its mass, it's so tiny that it would be inconsequential. So if you were to solve for h, for instance, if you were to solve here for h, you would have to multiply mv by lambda. And that means as mass goes down, as the mass gets smaller, the wavelength would get larger. And so if you were to have something like uh, an electron that has a teeny, teeny, tiny little wave or mass, you would see it would have a pronounced wave. But if you had something like a baseball that was enormous, you would have a very teeny, teeny, tiny wave, so small that it wouldn't make any difference at all. It would just be nothing. It, it would be ignorable. The next guy to come along is Werner Heisenberg. And Heisenberg, um, as he was looking at the matter wave that de Broglie came up with, made a determination that it's impossible to know where the location of the uh, electron is at the same time that you know its momentum. So you can know its momentum or you can know its position, but you can't know both. So imagine if you were to look uh, at a picture of an intersection. Okay, so let's say it's at night and you can see the lights of the cars at an intersection. You could kind of tell which direction the cars were going because you could see their headlights on one side and their taillights on another side. But if you just took a picture, you wouldn't really be able exactly to tell if every car was stopped or in motion. Um, you could kind of make some guesses, but you, weren't, you wouldn't be sure. If you were to expose the photograph for a long time, say an hour, so the light was coming in the lens a long time, suddenly what you'd get is you'd get streaks you could tell if a car swerved on the way to the intersection. You could tell the direction that it was moving. You could tell whether it turned left or right after it went through the light because the light from its lights would, would be recorded in the camera. Well, it's like that. You can know the path of the car, but you can't know its position. You could know the position of the car, but not its path. Right? It's like picking up a tomato seed. If you've got a tomato seed on your plate that's so tiny and so slick that if you touch it, by touching it, you move it. So you can't really, by measuring its location, you move the location because the only way that you could see its location would be to shine something on it. And by shining something on it, you have energized that electron and moved it. So his uncertainty principle is that we can't determine the exact position, direction of motion, and speed of a subatomic particle at the same time. 
And for electrons in particular, we can't determine their momentum and their precision simultaneously.